Welcome to another episode of Hallmark RV TV on YouTube. Today we're going to do series two of winterizing. Um, this will apply for the Ute, the Ute XS, XL, Kuchara, Ute Everest Hybrid in some cases, and we'll talk a little bit about batteries um, and that uh, prevention there as well. Okay, let's get going. Okay, most of you are going to have dual 6 volt batteries in series. Uh, these are 220 amp hour batteries. They are going to be wet cell batteries. Okay, and you're going to want to make sure that the fluid levels um, are good in these batteries. You should be checking these spring and fall. For winter, okay, if you do not have solar, if you do not have solar, you need to take these out. Or if you do not have um, one of the new three stage converters, the PD converters, you need to be taking these out. If you leave it plugged in on the older hallmarks, okay, and even a lot of the older campers, you are going to boil the water in the batteries and destroy them. You're going to overheat the batteries, leaving them plugged in. The newer hallmarks, if you have the progressive dynamics, smart charge converters, okay, you don't have to worry about it as much, but you are going to need to check the water level in the batteries, okay, especially if you leave it plugged in. So, um, please take your batteries inside in a place that's non-freezing, set them on a piece of wood, a piece of carpet, a piece of rubber, somewhere they're not going to be directly on the concrete. It is not a myth, if they are on the concrete, they will discharge, okay, and you don't want these to discharge. Okay, let's go on with uh, winterization. you a, a neat little toy we've gotten in lately um, this is a Honda 2000 uh, generator box okay as you can see it's a completely lockable okay pop it, pop it open you'll see the 2000 in, inside okay um, does have an exhaust port right here okay you can pull off the side okay. reach the choke get to the starter operation pull off the front here and you can get all to all the controls. There's room to carry some oil in there. Um, nice little generator box. So something that we're offering at Hallmark uh, currently. Okay, let's move on. All right. Um, you can look at this. This is a great uh, illustration of the battery. Dual six volt batteries in series. The rear battery is negative to the negative in the camper. Then you have a jumper from the positive to the negative, and then the camper positive hooked in the front battery. So that's in series, giving you 220 um, amp hours, giant 12 volt battery, two 6 volt batteries in series. Okay. Uh, another thing, if you have one of the older Hallmarks without the smart charge converter, you might look into a genius charger as you see here um, this could be left plugged in it's smart it's not going to destroy your battery so if you don't want to take the batteries out a genius charger might be something that you might be interested in um, you can see here the hookups um, it's not going to destroy your battery this is the medium level they make a smaller one and they make a larger one this is the medium level or if you just want to go to harbor freight and get a cheapie they call a float charger that'll work as well you can hard install these or you can just leave them out and use them for all kinds of different things so genius charger if you have the older hallmarks without the smart charge converter and if you just have an older camper um, that doesn't have the smart charge converter in it it's only been around for i don't know six seven years now so um, a lot of campers out there still don't have smart charge converters in them okay some of the things you'll need today um, you're going to need your dump hose okay um, again, an air source and an air chuck, your uh, um, blowout plug, some RV antifreeze, okay, um, uh, you want the prop, uh, uh, the glycol uh, antifreeze, 
Um, you're not going to put it in any of the drinking systems. You are only going to put it in the P-traps. So that's why you have a Dixie cup. And then you're going to need Teflon tape. A 15 16th open end wrench. 15 16th open end wrench. Okay, so these are the items that you'll need today to winterize your Ute, Kachara, um, Ute Everest hybrid in some cases, and uh, uh, sometimes an Everest, depending. So, all right, let's get started. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the passenger side of the camper and look for the small door in the back. Take your 751 key. Open up, and you'll find three low point drains. One, two, three. Okay. One is just directly to the tank. One is your hot water line side. One is your cold water line side. Just like this. Cold line, hot line, tank. You're going to go ahead and turn those in line. When they are in line, okay, meaning they're in line with the hose, they are open, and you're going to start draining from these right here. Okay. That's a gravity drain. Make sure you open all three. Three, one, two, three. Cold line, hot line, tank. Okay. And you'll go inside the camper. Okay. Open both the hot and cold at the sink. Okay. You want those completely open. All right. And you'll open hot and cold at the shower. Uh, inside at the inside shower okay you're gonna get a you also need about a two foot stick you'll go ahead and open the bowl push the flusher down open the bowl and stick your stick in there that's gonna hold the valve open let air get around it and you won't destroy the valve so a two foot stick stick down inside the toilet holding the valve open okay, okay. so Shower is open, sinks open, toilet is open. Okay. Now you've got all those things open. Hopefully you've dumped, but if you haven't dumped yet, you can let everything be gravity draining. Okay. Then you'd go ahead, get your dump hose. Okay, and connect to your dump valve. Okay, you're gonna open your black valve first, and then take your gray and chase it. Okay. The gray is going to clean, your, clean you out. So black valve first, gray and chase it. Okay. Make sure you do this at a proper place, a dump station. Hopefully you've already done that before you started this process, but if you haven't, now would be a good time to do so. Okay. okay. Finally, okay, with everything open, you've got the sink open, you've got the shower open, um, you've got the toilet valve open. Okay, make sure your water pump is off, unless you need to, to quick drain it. Okay. Oops, I forgot my keys. Okay, and you've got your low points open as well, all three of them. Okay. You can take your outside shower out, open your hot and cold, unscrew the neck. Don't lose, okay, the rubber grommet. Shake out the neck, okay, make sure these are open, okay. Once you have these open, it'll alleviate the pressure here so you don't have a projectile. If you don't open all these things first, the shower, the sink inside here, you're going to have a projectile. Make sure they are open. Take your 15 16 open in, okay, and take out your low point drain plug. Stand to the side, water is going to shoot out. This is a six gallon tank. This is a DSI tank, but it's a six gallon tank. You're going to have water. It's going to block, so it's not going to shoot out as far as the little guy, but it's going to shoot out pretty good. So stand to the side so you don't take a bath. Okay. Let everything gravity drain. Okay. Go ahead and now go back. You'll need your uh, air source. You'll need your blowout plug. Okay. You'll connect to the city water connection, which is right here. Your city water connection. Go ahead and install your blowout plug. Okay. 
and then you'll take your air source okay and blow it out through the blowout plug okay um, no more than 80 psi a bike pump again will do um, 30 psi is, is is ideal so you can go to the gas station to use their air you know you can get a portable air compressor at uh, it's 12 volt um, you get those at uh, Harbor Freight for you know, $36 so but make sure you blow it out sure everything is open that's going to blow air through the line and get everything cleaned out okay. finally once you have everything blown out okay, you use your Dixie cup and your antifreeze and go back to all the p-traps okay. Okay. antifreeze in your p-trap and a freeze in your p-trap okay so in both the double sinks you know forget about here so don't forget that's your bathroom and a freeze and your p-trap in the sink and a freeze in your p-trap in the shower okay you've put your stick in here so you have that open no worries there okay. you might want to put a little chemical or bleach or whatever back in this tank just so you don't get the odor and it'll keep things sticking it to the plastic because you've got that all open that'll keep it nice and clean for next season okay you can fill it up with a little water and antifreeze is fat which you choose to do but you fill it up with a little water and some bleach don't mix choose one or the other okay that'll keep odors down keep it ready to go for next season all right leave everything open until you're ready for next season okay the air getting around and everything We'll keep it, um, uh, we'll va basically evaporate whatever's left. So if you want to run your pump dry, you can while you're blowing it out, no longer than 15 minutes, okay? It's not gonna hurt it. It's got a check valve in it, it's a very tough pump. Leave it on for hours, yes, you are going to hurt it. But if you're gonna blow air through it with a pump running, that way you don't have to run antifreeze back into your drinking side of the system, only in the P-traps, okay? So this is only recommended in the P-traps, not in uh, the pump side uh, of the fresh water system. This is supposed to be uh, safe for you. I don't want to drink it. You probably don't want to drink it and it's hard to get back out. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you have an easy winterization process. If you don't, please call us. We'll answer the questions for you. 877-659-5753. Thanks for watching.